Hello, guys. Welcome to the Nanaya Yabua podcast. Welcome, welcome, Miss McLeod. Hi, hello. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank so, you for having me. You are very welcome, my dear. You are very <laughs> welcome. So, which, how do you prefer to be called? Miss McLeod or Malay, Malaya? Since we're friends, you can call me Marleya. <laughs> Malay. <laughs> Since I am honored, I am honored. But your stage name is Miss McLeod. Yes, that's right. Okay. All right. So, guys, I, 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 I wanted to really do all the background, introduce you 18 years old. You know, you have a fifth album. Mm -hmm. You are on stage as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And I have watched your stage performances. And it's like, oh my goodness, some reggae vibes and moves. It, I don't <laughs> even know where to start and where to stop. Not only that, you also performed on international stages. You've been on the Apollo Theater. Mm -hmm. it's like girl you're only 18 years old it was oh it was such a fun experience i love new york i love new york feels like my second home girl you're still canadian chill miss <laughs> 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 mcleod welcome to the show thank you so Tell us a little bit more about who you are, where you were born, and um, what you do. Okay. Um, so, hello, everybody. My name is Miss McLeod, and uh, I'm an 18-year-old singer, songwriter, music producer, artist. I love music. I want to pursue it as uh, as my career. I I used to, you know, I used to like um, I used to work and everything, um, but I left I left my job to solely focus on music. I love producing, you know, all of my albums and all of my songs. I play a variety of instruments. I play piano and guitar and, and bass and ukulele. So I just, I love being surrounded by music. Any opportunity I, I get to be able to sur surround myself by music, I'm there. I love performing and being on stage. Like I love sharing my original music because I want to bring something new for people to feel and for people to dance to as well, right? So whenever I get that opportunity, I'm gonna take it, right? So I just, in general, I love music and I love I love sharing my music with everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I could just feel the energy coming. It's <laughs> like. Mm. <laughs> give her a stage, give her a mic, get get a, get a band behind her. Mm -hmm. That's it. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. <laughs> so how long? You're only 18. How long did you start doing music? So I started, I had my first, I guess you could say, well, from what I can remember, I've I've always been singing. I've always loved music. My parents used to take me to parties. Uh, not parties, <laughs> uh, concerts. Um, so I remember we saw the Black Eyed Peas whenever I was like super young. I think I was around four or five. Yeah. And we were in like the mosh pit. I don't know why they brought a stroller to the mosh pit, but we were in like the mosh pit, like the very, very front where the gates were. Mm -hmm. And that's like my first, I guess, kind of memory. And I just remember feeling so moved. It's mm -hmm. just that certain energy that just transfers into your body whenever you hear the music, right? Whether it's like a certain yes. bass line or like a catchy hook or like a guitar riff or something on the piano or the chords, like it's just whatever it is, I, I just felt it, you know, it kind of touched my soul. So uh, ever since then, I've just, I loved singing. And uh, whenever I was seven, um, I remember my mom, my mom, my, my parents love music. Like my, my mom loves musicals and everything. And uh, my school was doing Annie uh one of what yeah one of the the musicals was annie and my mom said malia come on like you have to audition if you want to be able to perform like you need audition and put in the work and i was seven i was like ah, i don't want to do this being like a low mean bratty seven-year-old right but i ended up auditioning uh with with uh, the song that my mom helped me with and um and yeah my first performance that i can remember was whenever i was seven 
and uh, I sang maybe in front of uh, the whole school in elementary school. And that video is actually still on YouTube. I think it's one of my first videos or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, that really, I felt, I felt so much encouragement from everyone around me. So it, it really kept me going. Wow, that is great. That is <laughs> great. I, I find it very inspiring for people who find their sense of, you know, purpose so mm -hmm. early in mm -hmm. life. And sometimes for some some of us still past my age, mm -hmm. we kind of find what we want to do, but yeah. to each their own. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm really, really proud of you and also Thank your parents you. helping you, you know, yeah. going through. So you said you have Jamaican you. roots. Yes. So my dad is Jamaican and my mom is Canadian and I still have like a, a few family members still in Jamaica and everything. Um, but with COVID, it, it really hit the family hard. Mm, I'm so yeah. Happy. Yeah. It's all, yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. So now, now I know where the reggae flavor is coming from. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. My, my dad, like I was actually named after Bob Marley. So I, my first name, Mar, yes. and then Leia. So some, some people call me Marley and everything. I remember my grandparents or some of my like friends would call me Marley. <laughs> okay. I, mm -hmm. I thought it was a Marley kind of done a different way, you know. Okay. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. No, so you, you you had a song that you did with a reggae flavor. Feeling good feeling good mm -hmm. because it's an original jazzy soul music mm -hmm. and then you wh what inspired that okay so this happened i think around last year mm -hmm. and uh i was I, I was having a performance and they asked me they said oh marlea like since you know you have some jamaican roots why don't you you know tie some of that in to the performance so i was thinking okay but they're like we still want you to do feeling good so then I got a bit confused and I was thinking, well, how am I going to do this with the band? Like maybe if I transpose my own thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I went into, I went into uh, logic and uh, I used the original feeling good track. And then at the second verse or no, at the first verse, I started putting like some, you know, some reggae flavors into it. Mm -hmm. And I sent over that reference track to the band and they started practicing it. And they sent back the version and I was like, mm, I feel like I feel like it'd be better if we just went in person instead of emailing. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, we went in person. It was amazing. It was amazing. They did their thing and performing it for the first time. It just it felt so good. Like yeah. that's what feeling good felt like to me. I felt I felt good. I wanted to move and everything because the original feeling good version, it's very slow. Yes. But whenever you have this, you want to dance. Everyone yes. wants to dance, yes. right? So you're bringing a bit of that reggae Jamaican culture into like yes. some pop culture. Yes. And uh, uh, let's give a kudos or shout out to your band. I, I, I saw the band behind you and mm -hmm. um, I, I think they got you like crazy. Yes, it's, I, I could just feel the pride in them when they're looking at you in the front performing and it's like, yeah, 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 no, I, and I want to thank them. I want to thank Joanne because he was one of the people that really helped me with like with the band and everything as well. So he did an amazing job, you know, getting everybody to be on the same page. Really good. So you found the band in Ottawa. So this was actually through a, um, a program, an artist program uh, called Honey Jam. And uh, and yeah, so we all had like a final uh, showcase. And um, yeah, we had the option to perform with the band. And I, I love performing with a band rather than a track. So yeah, so uh, we ended up, they ended up, you know, setting up the band and the, the band played for, you know, all of the other artists for the showcase. And um, yeah, I got the opportunity to play with them. Okay. So and this was in this was in Toronto. Oh, it was in Toronto. Oh, yes. Geez. I'm not missing the next Toronto showcase. <laughs> the, 
for me personally, anybody who is able to perform with a band is the true architect of music. Oh, is a I true love architect of music. So kudos mm -hmm. to you. Oh, thank you. No, I much rather perform, prefer performing with a band rather than instrumental track. It's just, mm -hmm. it's so much more. It, it, it's more of the energy. I, music has such a strong energy, energy that I feel like a lot of people don't realize, especially you, like if you listen to a certain genre of music where it's, you know, always talking about violence or like a certain subject, you're going to end up feeling closer and thinking that you can relate to that that subject, right? So that's why I, I just, I love performing with a band because you, you feel more of a ties to not just the instruments, but the but people the that people. are playing the instruments yeah. as well. Yeah, you feed off each other's energy. Yes, exactly. Yes. So now, so it's like before we see, for instance, you you have your fill your fifth uh, self produced album, Sugar Cane Out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what was the process? You know, the creativity process like for you? So, so for that one, um, oh my goodness. I'm I'm not gonna go into too much detail because oh now that, I'm interested. Not, teenagers, uh, 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 now it's just I the teenage interested. stuff. Like oh my gosh, no. Uh, no. It's <laughs> Listen, for 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 us that grew up in a different generation, who don't yeah. know what you guys are doing <laughs> these days, it is just a little. Just give us a little sneak peek into that. Okay. Part. So I, oh my gosh, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, I ended up having a, like a, I ended up liking this person. Oh, and you had a crush on this person. Yeah, I had a crush on him. And uh, the name is actually named after, named after, after him. So uh, his, his, his Instagram handle was Kane. And I was like, sugar Kane. Oh, that is, so I, it was a it was a little cuckoo of me, um, no, but no, most no, of the no, songs. No, no, no. Sugar cane is sweet, so yes, it's sweet, and a lot of the songs on there they and were like, it's they, natural. Yeah, yeah, and and like a lot of the songs on there, they were expressing how much like not how much I liked it, but ma mainly what I felt. There's mm -hmm. one of the songs where I was like a bit upset and everything, um, and it was about that person. So a few of the songs were made for him. And then some of the other songs were made for, you know, other people want to, sometimes you go through phases and you have questions on different people. <laughs> so I like to say that most of it was for him, but some of the other songs, you know, were for other people. So it was, but the album, it took, uh, like some of the songs were from, like, I think whenever I finally finalized the album, it took around like a year a year because yeah because some of the songs were from a little earlier and then the other ones were a little more recent so you can kind of see it's kind of cool because you can kind of see the development of like my musical style as you yeah. listen to more of the album and everything mm -hmm. um but a lot of it yeah all of it was just recorded uh in my room on my computer on logic pro and um some of some of the songs were inspired by a few of uh, a few of the other artists that I really like. So yeah. my song More was inspired by um the song Waiting for Love. I can't remember who it's I can't remember who it's by, but it's off of the Men in Black album. And the song goes, mm -hmm. I'm still waiting, waiting for love, anticipating your love. So there's like it sounds like a song from my generation. It it most definitely is. I love, I love the, the old school generation. Like I love hey, we we're, we're not old school. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. But I love the I'm not a big fan of the modern music. I feel like it's just all kind of copy paste electronic. The other stuff you really you really feel yeah. it and everything. So yeah, so one of the trumpet parts or the, the brass section mm -hmm. was inspired by what they did with the music production and that. And then better luck. That was inspired a bit by Erica Badu, as well as mm. one of a tribe called Quest songs. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, 
I really liked the flow that they had in a tribe called one of the tribe called quest songs. I can't I can't remember exactly which one because they have so many songs with random names. Um, but I really liked the flow that they had at the chorus. So I was like, okay, I want to do that. And then I liked Erica Badu's lyricism. Um, and I wanted to kind of copy that vibe a bit, keeping it a bit like, you know, like an R and B, a little bit of like a soulful like indie oh, yeah. song. Right, so I I got some inspiration from her as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, let me tell you, if you give me a song, I cannot sing. Forget that. No, I, I, anybody I, I, can I, sing. I, I will sing in the shower for only me. <laughs> I nobody else. What about in the car, at least? with nobody else what? with nobody else oh. with nobody else once you start singing yeah. for other people though it gets super fun uh we'll we'll see <laughs> <laughs> Thank so you. with all this musical it, you know you've mentioned a tribe called quest erica badu all these mm -hmm. soulful r&b indie musicians it, 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 it's like um if in the future or if at any point in time mm -hmm. you you are to um perform mm -hmm. with, with somebody or mm -hmm. be an opening act yeah who do you have in mind bruno mars silk sonic <laughs> <laughs> i've been waiting for this question i love oh my gosh no either either them bell did the vote I love, I love, love, love Belle Biv DeVoe. It really, it like, that's my general question, like my general answer, but there's there's just so many artists that, I, like I love so many different like genres and everything too, where it just, it just depends. But if I want a good, upbeat, fun night, Silk Sonic. Silk Sonic, Silk mm -hmm. Sonic, okay. Well, th th that was unexpected for me, yeah? but- yeah I, it was unexpected but i i, I can see the energy mm -hmm. the energy the energy and mm -hmm. I, I can tell you guys will vibe yeah <laughs> wow yeah so with all this that you're doing and whatnot i know nothing ever comes easy you'll have some challenges and, mm -hmm. and triumphs and mm -hmm. all those things mm -hmm. What what are some of the challenges you've no before we get to the challenges in the music industry? Mm -hmm. Are you still in school? So I graduated high school last year, oh. and then I did a one year performing arts program, mm -hmm. and then I just graduated that. So I have my graduation June twentieth. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a lot, just a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of side things that are happening. <laughs> No, uh, well done. I'm really proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you the, so much. The reason why I asked that question was I was I was wondering how you combined music with mm -hmm. what and education and your academics. Mm. But, but it, it's making sense. Mm -hmm. But but I would really love for you to talk about that a little bit. If there is a young person younger than you similar of your age or somebody mm -hmm. thinking of going through that path that you walk in right mm -hmm. now what is mm -hmm. the best you know supportive you know advice you can give i would say don't be scared of what other people think really whenever you really have to stay in your your own lane and it's it's hard because me i'm always thinking about what other people think and then but at, at the end of the day, I don't really care about their negative opinion because it's something I love so much. I cherish I cherish my music more than their opinion. And I feel like whenever you love something so much, you wouldn't really care about what other people think if they have bad thoughts about it and everything. You only focus on the positive thoughts unless, unless it's constructive criticism and they want to see you succeed and they're saying good things to help you out. Um, but one thing that I would I would definitely suggest is, is use your peers. You have so many people that you can inspire. And I, I don't mean 
use them like you know take advantage of their kindness and everything and and, and say oh listen to this and then never talk to them again you know yeah. no really really you want to help them use your music as a power to help them mm -hmm. right you don't know that you don't know if some of your music some of the songs that you make and everything that you know you thought were for just yourself you don't know if that can help a bunch of other people as well and i didn't know that either until like recently a few of, a few of my friends like would message me at like 12 a.m and be like Malaya, i was i was listening to let the water run and it just it really healed my soul and, and i'm thinking i hate that song but i can't believe that you think that because like yeah i and i realize music is subjective too it is art is subjective art, art is subjective people no, you yeah people are gonna people are gonna say their opinion whether it's good whether it's bad but you have to remember you're the one who made it you're the one that had the vision you can take that vision you can do so much with mm -hmm. it right and you can help so many people with it too that is true that is true. Mm -hmm. so this music that you talked about let the water run um mm -hmm. can you get a give us a, a wee bit about it for sure Drop so a few notes yeah okay so here maybe i might be able to no no i was gonna say i might be able to take my phone over to like the, the piano and everything and start playing a bit of it oh um <laughs> but that yeah nice. it's a uh, yeah okay i'll do that right now while yeah. i don't don't mind me <laughs> i'm gonna That's go play okay. the piano again and um i i really went through a phase of liking bossa nova music Mm -hmm. and uh i i loved the chords and i loved how calming it made me feel um so i wanted a song that you could listen to and just really relate to whenever you're going through a difficult time and uh yeah so a bit of it this is the intro i'm going to see if i can remember it cuz it's been a while <laughs> But yeah, so the process for that, I just I loved it. I loved the the chords that I that I chose on the piano, and uh, and yeah, I decided to you know record it into my uh, my 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 uh, computer. I was about to call my computer my piano. I was like, no, it's not the word. And uh, and yeah, I added some some drums and sent like a bossa nova like yeah. drum over it, and uh, and yeah. That's how that's how the song just magically happened. <laughs> no, I, I I love the lyrics. I I love Thank the you. lyrics to it. Thank you. That, that Thank was you. beautiful. That was Thank you. I, man, when are you having a show in Toronto or close by? <laughs> oh, I'd love to have a show in Toronto. I'm going to definitely I'm going to definitely try and, and figure it out because I, I would love to love 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 to have a show in Toronto. I'll find a, a nice venue. And I'll see. I'll see if I have any people in Toronto that would love to come. Well, you have one here. Yay! <laughs> I'm trying not to scream now. I was gonna say. Hey! <laughs> that was so beautiful. That was so beautiful, Malia. That was so great. 
guys you watching us on the nana yaya Bua podcast and i am with miss mcleod that is a stage name but i'm <laughs> privileged it's my call, friend <laughs> <laughs> to call her malaya she is a wonderful artist and what i didn't even acknowledge in the beginning is that we met or no i you came to my attention at the um how do, fourth annual george floyd yes yes i mm -hmm. listened to you and uh i was also I, I i listened to you do your anthem and then you also speak to um jean augustine yes. and it's like who is this young person oh such a privilege to be surrounded by yes. so I, I keep saying this but honestly like i truly mean it it's such a privilege to be surrounded by such amazing and, and smart people too yes did so much and it's the fact that the that it's 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 still the the meeting is, is still happening every year yeah that's just it's just amazing because it shows people that we're not going to forget we're not going to forget and people really do care and okay. just like you said everybody has you know the power to bring in some positivity make some mm -hmm. changes and you are mm -hmm. using your your music and mm -hmm. your passion you know to to do that so mm -hmm. and you finding yourself i don't know <laughs> Girl, I'm so jealous. Listen, when I was when I turned 18, I just mm -hmm. finished high school. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my goodness, I was going to conquer the world. How? Mm -hmm. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. I still haven't figured anything out yet. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure it out. It's okay. Me too. To be honest, I... It's, you have I a feel, long way. <laughs> oh, I feel so on like honestly though, I feel so it's it's so weird not having a structure. Like I I feel so lost to be honest. Like I feel uh, sometimes sometimes I'm like thinking like uh, how how am I going to when am I going to move out? <laughs> when am I going to going to move out and, and 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 be able to actually live off of what I want to do rather than just do do it on the on the side you know I, I i will tell you this so far as your parents are supportive mm -hmm. of this journey mm -hmm. enjoy the process okay grow in wisdom mm -hmm. grow in strength mm -hmm. grow in your musical career and journey and that success you're talking about mm -hmm. will come okay don't be in a rush to go live on your own Paying bills is not sweet. Oh, bills are so expensive now too. It is so expensive <laughs> nowadays. Be mm -hmm. happy to be in the bosom of your family and grow. Mm -hmm. When the time comes, nobody's going to tell you. The right mm -hmm. time will come and then you ease into that next phase of your life. Yeah. Don't oh be goodness. in a rush. If yeah. I knew at 18 years old that when I, as an adult, I would be paying bills, mm -hmm. if I could reverse engineer my age, I'll go back yeah. to this for somebody to do. That. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be in a rush to get old. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy this 18 years old. Mm -hmm. enjoy when you're 19 years old and your parents mm -hmm. are still there for you mm -hmm. enjoy your creative process and keep being bright keep okay. conquering okay the per the best thing you have is that your parents are there for you yeah on each and every step you take mm -hmm. thank you so thank you for that thank you i I needed that. I really needed that. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. This was not an advice session. <laughs> yes. It turned into one though. It turned it turned into one. I felt like a mama speaking now. It's like, oh, okay, nana. Calm yeah. down. <laughs> oh, 
give oh, Miss McLeod a break. <laughs> no, honestly, I appreciate that though, because it's true. Oh, it, just, yeah, with, um, with with everything that's happening now with the world and the economy, it's it's hard. It is. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. It will balance out, and then you'll find you know your your space. Yeah. So now let, let's talk about this next phase that you've gotten into. May 31st to June 9th, you mm-hmm. are on stage as Dorothy. Yes. On the Wizard of Oz. Yes. Talk to me about it. So, yeah. Oh, I, one, I just want to say I'm, I'm having such a good time. I love everybody that I'm with. There's not mm-hmm. one person that is like a weak link. Everybody can sing everybody can dance everybody can act the set yeah. is beautiful the costumes are beautiful the makeup the, the hair like it's just it it's it's perfect it, in my eyes i i view it as perfect and yeah. um i like to view everything as a learning experience and i remember oh you mm-hmm. have the same glasses <laughs> <laughs> but but i remember whenever i, I was first about to about to audition I, I wasn't thinking of auditioning I, I was thinking of well one am I gonna have the time for it two am I gonna get in because whenever you look at Dorothy like I mean she's just she, I don't she's like the stereotypical like you know like white little girl and everything right mm-hmm. and if you have sometimes people don't don't sometimes people really focus on keeping it one Twice. way yeah. and not changing it right so i was really kind of doubting myself that i was going to get in i was i was thinking well they they're not going to have me they're not going to mm-hmm. right because because i, I thought it was because of the way I, that i looked and um and i still went in and i still gave it my all but i didn't i i wasn't thinking i was going to commit to it because i didn't think anything of it and uh, whenever they called to say that I got the part, I got in, but specifically got Dorothy, I was, honestly, I started crying. I started crying because I was like, oh my gosh, this means more than I feel like any other person would kind of understand. Because one, one, I got the dream role that I always wanted to, but two, you have black representation in a role that mm-hmm. isn't about race. Mm-hmm. right you have other musicals like hairspray where you have black yeah. representation but it's the the story is based on race this mm-hmm. has nothing to do with to it do. Yeah. and you still have black representation which mm-hmm. i think it's absolutely amazing that they were able to look past that they were able to look you know past my skin color and past mm-hmm. what my hair looked at everything and actually look at the the talent that was there and the dedication that was there and, and mm-hmm. the potential so and everybody that i've worked with has just been so amazing the the music director is so open and, and honest and everybody there has just helped me grow and uh i'm so happy that you know we're able to perform it now for so many people to, hundreds hundreds almost i think almost thousands of people to see until june 9th so i'm i'm really happy that i get to you know work work with the the tin man and the lion and the scarecrow and tm and mm-hmm. and uh the, the good witch and the bad witch they're all so supportive and and so sweet and i just i want to spend i i'm gonna i'm getting a bit emotional but i want to specifically thank the director for i guess making me realize that it is possible to actually do what i want to do with you know how i am oh that is great that <laughs> is great but aside from that you know what i i i i'm going to summarize it so that mm-hmm. whoever that is listening, whether you're an adult or a, a, a young person coming to mm-hmm. number one, never doubt yourself. Number two, take the chance, whether you get it or not. It's an experience. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And as you said, it is possible. Mm-hmm. Even in the word impossible is possible. Yes, so it, it, it is possible. Mm-hmm. And also not to put a stumbling block in f- ahead of you before yeah. getting there. Yes. Be- because if you had not made that attempt, mm-hmm. had not tried, mm-hmm. it's not anybody sidelining you. It is you sidelining yourself. So mm-hmm. the defeat already would have come from your mind. Yeah. And then you wouldn't succeed. 
Mm -hmm. So I think the general take, take out from this for me, as much as for everybody is go ahead, give it a try. If you get a no, try another day. If you, yeah. you never know if you get a yes, it is a new friend door that mm -hmm. has opened for you. Yeah. So thank you and, for trying. Yeah. Well, no, I, honestly, and and as I said, like one one small decision can change your whole life path. It can change your whole life path, but also other people's lives. Yes. Look at the case of um, Denzel Washington, mm -hmm. and what is the name of this guy that passed on um, Black Panther? The Chad, Chad, Chad Chadwick Bosman. Yes, okay. I thought you meant the actual group. I was like, no. oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Denzel Washington's life, the decisions he made in his life, mm -hmm. him being an actor, him deciding to pay for people's for other people's school fees mm -hmm. as actors, that decision that he made made an impact on Chadwick Bosman. For Chadwick mm -hmm. Bosman to become the man that he became, to yeah. act in Black Panther, which became a cultural renaissance, transforming mm -hmm. many of us and actually uplifting many Black people. We look at Chadwick Bosman, but it starts from, from Denzel Washington. But when mm -hmm. Denzel Washington is also telling his story, it starts from the woman in the beauty shop, in his mother's beauty shop that saw something in him mm -hmm. and had a positive testament into mm -hmm. him for him to, it, it, you see how all those dots. So sometimes we think we're living our lives for ourselves yeah, and it's not for us. It's mm -hmm. for the next person yes, or for the next two or three people way mm -hmm. ahead of that. So mm -hmm. if, with this interview, even if you don't get anything, you get that. Yeah. And and a lot of people get something out of it. Yes. It's yes. it's very easy to inspire people. Uh, if you say so. No, I get I get inspired easily by people. I think <laughs> No. It's, it's skepticism have not set in yet. So <laughs> it, it, <laughs> I mean, you inspired me, Miss. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. But it will take a lot for you to inspire me to take a mic and sing. Maybe I can sing here and there, but uh, well, we'll, we'll you can see definitely about sing. That. I I know I know. Once you try it, you can definitely. That is wonderful, Miss mm -hmm. McLeod. It's been such a pleasure having you on the Nanaya Ayabua podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be able to share my story with everybody listening and, and share my story with you as well. It was so great talking with you. Thank you. Thank you. So if we're looking for your music, where can we find it? All streaming platforms. I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud uh amazon music yandex youtube music um and that's miss mcleod so m-i-s-s-m-c-l-e-o-d you can also check out uh my most recent music video that i dropped it's called no drama and uh i got some of my friends to be part of it and everything so i was you know i had the privilege to choreograph it and edit the video and you know put my artistic vision into it and everything so it's a little something a little homage to the the old school hip hop and everything, you know, the good vibes. The good vibes. Don't want no drama. Who was giving you drama? <laughs> Sometimes it's the high school. It's the high school drama. I want to know which guy was giving you drama. It's the high school drama. That's why we have to make a song. So it's like once you once you're about to get drama, you can play this anytime. Somebody's giving you drama, start playing the no drama. I want no drama. drama. Hey. Okay. <laughs> I want no drama too. I want no drama too. Yes. It's been such a pleasure. It's been Thank such you. a pleasure. You know Thank what you. I... Well, <laughs> you're a beautiful young woman with a lot, lots and lots of potential, lots Thank of you. positive energy. Thank Don't you. Don't let that go. Live in that. 
live in your child, you know, um, childfulness. Thank you. Not being childish, but you know, mm-hmm. and, and embrace it, keep it, mm-hmm. and grow with it. Thank you so much. Don't lose it. Don't, Thank don't you. ever lose it. Okay. Mm-hmm.